Well, hi everybody, this is God Sad. Hope your week has gone well. Earlier this morning, I finished watching Succession, the uh, series that has had two seasons so far. And so if any of you are concerned about spoiler alerts, or spoilers rather, please don't listen to any sad truths that I do that might involve Succession. Because one of the things I was thinking of doing is conducting a content analysis of some of the plot lines in the show. This, by the way, comes from a uh, process that I describe in several of my books where I talk about cultural products being fossils of the human mind. The idea being that song lyrics, uh, literary uh, plots, movie plot lines, television plot lines, uh, religious narratives, art, all of these cultural products can be studied. Their contents could be studied because they could say something about our universal human nature. This is what allows us to listen to a, uh, a song f from a completely different culture, but the, uh, the lyrics move us nonetheless because we understand what is being conveyed. Or we could listen to, or, or read a ancient Greek poem and completely understand what the poet in question was saying, even though the poem was written 2,000 years ago. Uh, his reality is different from yours, but the software that runs his mind is exactly the same one that runs yours and mine. So with that perspective in mind, I thought that I would, uh, I thought at first I was going to do a, a, you know, a long drawn out analysis of many of the plot lines of succession, but I thought I would focus uh, perhaps on one at a time uh, so that I don't uh, overwhelm you with too many evolutionary analyses. So on the last episode, for those of you who've been following it, uh, Logan Roy, who is the patriarch of this uh, big empire uh, is looking for a patsy to blame this big scandal, this big sex scandal for, what, for one of their divisions. And he's looking for someone to pin it on, wrongly pin it, erroneously pin it, but some, some big head must roll. And he brings in his, one of his sons, uh, Ken, who is a very, very interesting character. I mean, all the characters are so fascinating on that show, truly, because they're truly, not, not to sound cliche-ish, but so so complicated and so complex and so multidimensional, truly. Uh, that's one of the things that both my wife and I agreed was so uh, interesting about the uh, series. By the way, uh, shout out to the person at our local cafe who suggested to me that I watch the series thinking that I would enjoy it. You were right. So anyway, so going back to this last episode, uh, the father decides that Ken, one of his sons, is going to be the one that he is going to pin this whole thing on. And he tells him that you're going to go up there at a press conference and you're going to say that, you know, you were the one who knew all about it. The buck stops with you. And then basically he's feeding him to the wolves. Now, what is very interesting is that before, you know, he, that that scene ends, uh, the father tells the son about an Inca practice where they would choose someone to sacrifice to the God so that this, the God so that the son could rise again the next day. And as he was about to say it, I stopped the the actual running of the uh, thing to tell my wife, I bet you I know what he's going to say. And I know what the right evolutionary analysis is. And basically what he said, and I was correct, is that uh, they chose the one that you know sort of was most dear to them, that they loved the most to sacrifice, because then that would be a truly honest signal of their commitment. Now, of course, for those of you who know my work, this is exactly what we mean when we say for, for a signal to be uh, honest, it has to be costly. This is also called Zahavian signaling, or it's called the handicap principle. That's why the peacock's tail is so burdensome and so wasteful because it is basically saying, look, despite the fact that it reduces my survivability, look at me. I must be the real deal to be able to have survived all this time with such a conspicuous tale. So this handicap principle, this costly signal, this Zahavian signal is exactly what's happening here, right? With the Inca practice. We are going to give our favorite person as a sacrifice because that serves as an honest commitment to uh, how much we worship you, O son, son, S-U-N. And that's exactly the argument he uses to uh, convince his son 
that it should be okay for him to be fed to the wolves. He's basically saying, look, it's because I love you so much. I mean, effectively, that's what he's saying. It's because I love you so much, because you're the dearest to me, that I need to feed you to the wolves. Because how else could the signal be honest to all the wolves out there who are going to be hovering around to try to get all of us unless I sacrifice my favorite prodigal son, and it's you. So truly incredible. I don't know if the screenwriters knew of the evolutionary signature behind this behavior, but that's exactly what it is. It is a form of Zahavian signaling. And truly, it was a incredible I mean, moment of, of, a, of a grand Greek tragedy. I won't tell you what the sun ends up doing in case you still want to watch it. So in a sense, I haven't spoiled anything for you. Uh, but there you have it. When you have an understanding of the evolutionary underpinnings of human behavior, it allows you to unlock our deep, uh, multifaceted mysteries of our emotions, our cognitions, our perceptual system, our behaviors, and so on and so forth. So that's what I tell my students when I teach them about evolutionary psychology. It's not in the context of only applying it to consumer psychology. It allows you to apply it in any place where there are human beings. There you have it, folks. I hope that you have a great weekend. Uh, I will probably do a few more of these applying an evolutionary analysis to specific plot lines from succession. And I think that eventually when I update my uh, class lectures, I will be incorporating some of this new material in my lectures and perhaps in a future book. Talk to you soon, everybody. Cheers.